Hello, my name is Edwin Rutsch and I'm the director of the Empathy Center located here in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. The center's mission is to build the empathy movement and to raise the level of empathy in society through education and community building initiatives. And my name is Anita Novak. I teach at McGill University and I'm the author of Purposeful Empathy, a book that invites readers to turn up the volume of empathy in their lives. And at the beginning of 2024, Anita and I co-hosted the Empathy Summit uh, brought to you by the Empathy Center and more than 40 authors of books about empathy participated. They shared what their book was about, why they were motivated to write it, and what they hope readers will take away. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll buy their book. Yeah, our first speaker of the day. So all our speakers have 10 minutes and we'll give a little signal at nine minutes just to keep um, ourselves on track with the agenda. Our first speaker and author is Chris Shipley. So she is an entrepreneur and co-founder of Constituent Connection, a platform that revolutionizes the way political candidates connect with voters uh, and the author of The Empathy Advantage, Leading the Empowered Workforce. So over to you, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and hopefully I'll stay right on track and keep this program going because there's so many great authors I want to hear from today. Um, but I'm really um, very glad to be with you all today um, and particularly um, want to just congratulate you on putting together this summit over the last four weeks. It's been wonderful to see so much focus on something that I think is so desperately needed in our in our this moment, which is a, an understanding and, and a practice of empathy. So um, with Heather McGowan, uh, I've written two books. The first was called The Adaptation Advantage. And I wanna start there, um, even though it's uh, you really, I think The Empathy Advantage, our second book is the one we, we wanna focus on, but I wanna start with The Adaptation Advantage because I think it'll explain how we got to, to The Empathy Advantage. In the fall of 2019, uh, we were putting the finishing touches on a book called The Adaptation Advantage that was really looking at how technological and culture change and the, the rapid pace of that was, was um, putting people in a place of, of uh, a challenge around identity. Essentially, if you, you identify as your work, as so many people did, you would find that as your work was shifting, um, you're in a very uncomfortable place. In fact, there was some data that suggests that it takes someone twice as long to get over the loss of their work identity, the loss of a job, than it may to get past the loss of a significant relationship. So imagine that your, your marriage breaks up, your partner passes away, and you can get through that trauma more easily than being fired from a job or being no, no longer able to practice in the profession of your choosing. And so we really wanted to understand a little bit more about work identity because we believed that life was changing and, and ultimately that you needed to, to adopt an, um, an adaptation mindset, um, both for yourself personally and for yourself as a leader oh, okay. in the organization. Um, yeah. It's the Empathy Summit. And so yeah. that was the, the, first, the last one, but I'm gonna... The first book that we did and we, Chris, we've lost you. Um, if everyone else can turn on their mute button, but Chris, we do want you. <laughs> well, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you. <clears throat> so as I was saying, we the, the book was finished. We went to the publisher in December of 2019. We had big plans for how we were going to launch this book. <clears throat> it was um, coming to market in um, late March of 2020. And I think, as you know, what happened then, uh, the world changed very quickly. Um, which was a, essentially turned our, our first book into this accidental guide for leading through the pandemic as people were trying to figure out how they adapted their workplace to be more accommodating to their workers in the midst of the pandemic. So in that period, we talked to a lot of leaders about what they were experiencing and what their workforce was experiencing. We talked to people who had really tried to, to make this shift and had made this shift to work from home and what that meant for them. And at the end of the day, what it meant for them is that they suddenly had so much more agency in the way they did their work. They were um, able to set their own terms, work the hours that made sense for them, manage their life, recenter work in their life to um, 
essentially moved from a place where your kind of work was at the center and you built everything around to a place where your life was at the center and your community, your family was there. And, and then work, work uh, was, was built around that. And that shift was a fundamental change in our workforce. Our workforce has become so much more empowered. And if that's the case, and, and I believe it is, and I don't think we're gonna put that toothpaste back in the tube anytime soon as now four years on, we're still wrestling with return to office policies and work from home and distance, distance work dynamics that are very challenging for leaders. And it was in that observation that we recognized that the that leaders needed to shift their perspective um, to work with this and enable their new workforces, this newly empowered workforce. And at the heart of that shift was empathy. And so that was the, the sort of origin story for the empathy advantage, um, really recognizing that all of the skills that you learn as a leader that got you to kind of the head of the class um, in, a, in a leading up to the pandemic time frame, were actually not going to get you where you needed to go going forward. You know, the kind of I'm the boss, I know it all, do as I say, command and control that many of us grew up with, um, built our careers around, um, that simply wasn't resonating with workers today. And so there, we identified what we thought were four mind shifts that were critically important for, for leaders going forward. And the first is to think about the fact that you are no longer managing people, um, but you're managing or you're enabling them. So this is a place where empathy obviously comes deeply, uh, becomes deeply important because you need to understand what it is your people need in order for them to be able to, um, be pr to perform at work. Um, and to, to be able to contribute to the team and be able to execute in their jobs. And that's you know, sort of resisting that urge to, to micromanage and really turning, flipping the, the script so that you're thinking not about these are the people who work for me, but I work for them. And my job as a leader now is not to tell people what to do, but to help them be successful. And, you know, great leaders have always done this. But I think this is this fundamental shift that is returning agency and autonomy to workers so that they are enabled to do the to do the work. So that's the first mindset sh mindset shift. E easy for me to say this early in the day. The second is culture. And we think about many workplaces and they're kind of a hunger game. You know, who's going to be employee of the month, the top performing salesperson, the, the you know, best ladder climber that competitive environment actually needs to shift and give way to one more of a collaborative contributor environment. In our fast changing workplaces, no one has all the answers any longer. Um, there's not one person that holds um, the, the secrets, the keys to unlock um, new opportunities. That's only going to happen in these collaborative environments. And so as a leader, your job isn't to pit your employees against one another to see who can outperform the other and, and drive performance, but rather to engage your teams into a collaborative exercise of, of group problem solving and engagement. That leads to the third uh, shift, which is really about approach. So often we think about, well, if I dangle a raise or a bonus or extra benefits, I give you some extrinsic reason to perform that you will do great work for, for the company. Um, and maybe it's sometimes even the kind of a, the carrot stick approach, right? If I, if there's pressure that says, well, if we don't do this, if we don't achieve these goals, these horrible consequences will, will occur. Well, that extrinsic pressure um, has, can work in a slow moving pay environment. It's not great. I don't think people like to work in those kinds of environments, but from a, you know, did we get our productivity numbers met? Um, yeah, that might work. But what works even more importantly is intrinsic motivation. It is really the ability to tap what drives your employees from their own selves that enables organizations to adapt and grow at speed and scale. And here again is a place where, you, where empathy as a leader takes center stage, where you can understand what it is that your people want and need, what gives them purpose and passion in their work, 
and then connect that passion to the, the performance that you need in the organization. Which means, and leading us, I think, to the fourth of our, our mind shifts, which is it's a shift in your behavior. It's, again, not a care, uh, management type leadership, but a, an inspirational kind of leadership. What is it we are trying to achieve together? How can we get to that um, mountain? How can we succeed together? Tapping that um, sense of behavior, that sense of leadership and inspiration um, by really knowing your people and really engaging with your people uh, are fundamental shifts that um, those four together, um, deeply connecting with the people who work for and with you, changes the workplace in a way that taps all of that agency that's been discovered in these last years and applies that agency to the product and the trials and the, the work that you are trying to achieve together. So I was saying the years since we've published the book, we've done lots of podcasts and interviews and conversations with folks. And the one piece of pushback I, I often hear, and I wonder from some of you if you hear the same thing, when we talk about empathy, they, they, they will say, well, that's, that's kind of soft. You know, isn't that mean that you're letting people get away with stuff, that they're not actually accountable? Or, you know, there's this whole misunderstanding that empathy somehow means being a nice guy at the expense of the company. And I wanna, I, my 10 minutes just rang and I know my time is up, but I wanna leave it with, you know, empathy is I think the most difficult thing you can do as a leader to really tap into what someone, uh, you know, how to make your organization work. And it doesn't mean not holding people accountable, but it means leading with clarity, leading with compassion and enabling people to deliver their best work. So, so much on this topic. And that's, I think, why it's been a four day uh, summit. And I really have enjoyed what I've heard and I'm looking forward to meeting and hearing from the other authors today. So thank you very much for your attention and thank you uh, for putting this on, Edwin, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Chris. And certainly uh, the CEO of Microsoft would agree with you that it is the hardest skill to develop. Um, so you're not alone there in believing that.